Hey guys, so today we have another video about the same story that we've been talking about for a while now, like four videos I think we've done on this, three, maybe this is the fourth one, I don't know. But anyway, it's an, an ever developing story, so if you want more updates then make sure you're subscribed because like I mentioned in a bunch of videos, YouTube is unsubscribing people, so scroll down, make sure you are subscribed. If you want to know more about this, subscribe turn on notifications to all rather than personalized and you'll know when at, when all of that is actually happening. Social media and second channel will be in the description and I'll actually have a little announcement. We have a new family member, I'll try and get her up. <laughs> she is sleeping so you know, don't want to be interrupting her too much. Here she is, she's a little bit sleepy. <laughs> she's a little um, cockapoo, she's a little poodle and cocker spaniel mix, she's tiny, she's not She's not the biggest. She's only just over eight weeks, so... Oh, that was a big yawn, wasn't it? Big yawn for a small girl. I found a family that had a litter of five of these, and obviously they weren't going to keep them, and she was the last girly that was there, so I snatched her up. And now she's mine, and she's sleepy. That's what she is. I'll put her in her crate so that she can have a good rest, because she's literally closing her eyes as we speak. She's asleep now. I hope she doesn't wake up before the end of this video because I will have to run with her to the garden because she does need to be potty trained. We're making some progress, we really are. She's doing great. I've only had her since Saturday and it is a Monday. She's only had, you know, a couple of, literally a handful of accidents and as a whole, she's doing really well. So we want to keep that going. And if she wakes up, I'm going to have to run with her. But she naps for ages, like sometimes she'll go to sleep and then she'll just take a nap during the day for like two hours Then she'll play for 20 minutes and then take another nap for two hours. I'm like, look I don't blame you. It's fine. Honestly, you know, 2020 is tiring. So it's fine. So let's get into the video. I have some notes. We're going to talk about the without a crystal ball situation. So there are some tweets that she tweeted out that I just wanted to go over because they're not looking good. So she has some of these, which I believe have now been deleted because I couldn't find them. And I found them on the without a crystal ball subreddit, but they weren't on her Twitter when I went, unless I'm just stupid, but she does tweet a lot during the day. So I can't really check everything. So she says, I refuse to be bullied for doing my job. I'm asking for subscribers to not engage with these trolls, to not engage with these videos and to allow me the space to do my job. It's like, why do you get a, a different kind of grace than other YouTubers? Like, what makes you more special? Or, or like, I understand how like sometimes beauty gurus are a bit like, oh, like I don't like when people talk about things that I'm doing, but she's a commentary channel who speaks about other channels and now she's in a lawsuit, which is obviously like a big deal because it's a lawsuit with a big YouTuber. So people are obviously gonna talk about it. This isn't things that people are speculating or making up or making rumors about. This is quite frankly, just documents that we have found on the internet that we're allowed to talk about. Anyway, she goes on to say, tomorrow my attorney and I will be working on our response to the lawsuit which will include a countersuit against Tati and James Westbrook and Michael Saltz who is the lawyer for defamation, interference in business and harm to competition. Now she has changed that, I'm going to get into it. I'll also be filing a grievance against Michael Saltz or Salt. It is my belief that Tati and James Westbrook along with their attorney have utilized drama channels to spread defamatory statements about me. It is my belief that they are using this lawsuit to use me as a scapegoat and to deflect from their lawsuit for fraud in California. I'll make no more statements at this time. I said everything I needed to say in my life tonight and in these tweets the rest will play out in court uh, this is not over and i'll get into the live in a minute she two days ago tweeted out 18 months ago all you drama channels cancelled someone based on a person allegedly spreading misinformation connect the dots then you all realized it was a lie and apologize so i'll wait uh she's referring to like we're gonna have to like apologize to her i don't know and then she goes on to say after what i read today i stand by this statement i want to thank my friends my people the ones i trust and the ones who support me hold me accountable and always have my back you know who you are uni fam but only people that she follows can reply to this tweet. She does that for a lot of tweets now. Anyway, then she goes, if you're going to unsubscribe over a campaign to cyber bully and harass me, as if talking about her lawsuit is harassment or bullying in any way, based on lies. All to hide the real story and the real issue by James Charles went through this a year ago. Now it's my turn, allegedly, in my opinion, free speech. What is happening outside? Why is there so much noise? Then she tweets how sad how some people believe their own lies and the, the stories they make up in their heads, which is very ironic for her to tweet out. Like, of all people, an adult bully tries to avoid responsibility for their own bad behavior by blaming the target for causing it. 
Why is a response being published as though it's official? There is no filed response in court. Why would an attorney grant access to a YouTube channel attorney to release a response that isn't from court? Hope the party spoken about doesn't sue the channel for defamation. She's talking about the lawyer, Emily, who recently read out a statement from Tarsi's lawyers that hasn't been officially filed yet, but she received it to just talk about it. Seems like someone is trying to run a narrative to sway public opinion, but not considering by doing this, they kind of defame a person with no evidence and seek to embarrass the person and reduce credibility. Again, my opinion. Not how I'd do things, but that's just me which ends me here at public stunt, my opinion. Also, the evidence released kind of proves that I'm not the reason for someone's company getting hurt. The partners are each blaming the other for the damage to the company and my name isn't ever mentioned, my opinion. So she's trying to say that Tati is saying that she ruined her business, but in reality, Tati and like the business partner are both blaming each other. But the thing is there can be more than one person blamed for one thing. It's not like exclusive to just like two people. According to the documents I read, it seems like they were kind of arguing about the business direction and they are both accusing the other of the company being damaged before I knew they existed. My opinion, I'll wait for everyone else to catch up and maybe apologize. Someone then says they also claim to have only registered Halo trademark under nutraceuticals. They have four or five trademarks for Halo for skincare, etc., etc. Why are they appearing to be stretching the truth when someone can look the trademarks up. She says, why blame me for their company or reputation being ruined when it's provable I had nothing to do with it? Pretty sure a couple of videos she uploaded created the mess, but what do I know? And then someone says, I don't know how you can be sued for having an opinion and from reading public records. When they released the vitamins, there was a hashtag trending scam life guru. That was February 2018. And then she goes, I mean, and then someone else said, so are you saying the Westbrook's legal team typed up some response that isn't a court or legal document and sent it over to the Emily D Baker exclusively for her to read on her channel? I was under the impression it was illegal court document she was going through which it's kind of stupid because if you just watch the video in the video she says it's not been filed yet so there's no deception there there's no lying and she goes what was in the video was not a court record for the case as of this morning there is no filing response and the documents were dated in her video from august before the lawsuit was filed this is not an official response and then they tag emily baker and says if you could clarify i'd really appreciate it so confused katie says what she shared appears to be discussions they had pre-litigation they were from a law firm and not a court filing period the case is public record and you can see there has been no response to this lawsuit emily says says you blocked her so don't know if she sees this and then Katie says Emily is not blocked but she will get a lawsuit from me if she continues to harm my business and cause me to lose subscribers if after someone makes a video on you you are losing subscribers chances are and that's not always because sometimes you know opinions sway like the James Charles situation but a lot of the time it's because people saw proof and decided to unsubscribe like that is not defamation that is not someone ruining your business that's literally you did something someone spoke about it and people decided to unsubscribe and she did block katie and then she unblocked her but she's because she did unblock her she's making it sound like she never blocked her in the first place it's just the way she says it like even if she doesn't mean it that way the way she makes it sound is oh i didn't block her like you did but you unblocked her because you realized how bad it looked someone then says she has a screenshot that you blocked her have you tried to reach out to her and then she goes she is not blocked yeah, but she was blocked. If Emily sees that she's blocked, she's not gonna then check every five minutes to see if she's blocked or not. Also, with that tone, why the hell would I believe she gives a damn about my side, mocking and laughing at me? Then Kate says, she's being biased. She doesn't even know my side. She's defaming me. <laughs> I like how she says, Tati has no grounds to sue her for defamation yet. All of the drama channels, me, Nick, Dustin, Creepshow Art, now Emily, like we're all apparently defaming her, but when it's Tati actually filing for defamation, there's no grounds for it. Interesting how that goes, isn't it? Can't just people stick to facts instead of rumors and tea. I'm so done with Tati stands. She has also been talking bad about Swanson with Tati's so-called reply. The thing is, there is no tea in Emily's videos. Emily literally reads the document and as a lawyer explains the language behind the document. She never expresses opinions. She never at one point said who she thinks is gonna win this lawsuit. At no point did she express that opinion. What she said though is the distraction of ev evidence motion that was filed looks bad because it does. And then Kate says she's never one time reached out to me, then hangs out with a troll account that have doxxed, harassed, called the police on me, called the hospital when my son was there, published my investigation to humiliate me. Emily sees and desist of your harm to my business. And then Emily says, haven't reached out to any parties in this case because I'm a commentary channel. I haven't been hanging out with anyone. Without crystal ball, I'm not harming your business or talking about you outside case commentary and answering questions based on your attacks. Then someone says, Emily, I just want one thing answered. Why did you not disclose the response you were reading was not filed because it came off like you were reading a le legal document. I'm just confused as to why you didn't do that. And then she goes, I state at the beginning of the video that it was a response prepared for litigation provided to me. I never said it was filed. It's also not in pleading format or on 
pleading paper. I never stated you said it was filed, but you never disclosed that either. I think this should have been disclosed because it came off as a legal document you were analyzing, thus giving it a lot of merit to the audience. Please remember many in your audience do not know anything about the actual law and that is why I think you should have mentioned it because I interpreted it as a legal binding document based on your presentation. I am also not alone interpreting it that way. A lot of people in the comments of your video acted as such, so I know I am not alone in that past conclusion. And she goes, no worries, I'll mention it in the next live again. Thank you, I'll watch that. I appreciate you taking the time to answer me. I have a good evening. And then basically she says that she will answer questions about facts. The other person responds saying, I can honestly say after reading the back and forth with without a crystal ball, in my opinion, I do think she's being overboard. Think it would be wise for her to just privately speak to her lawyer then for then threaten to sue people on Twitter. Nothing against her, but just no girl. Then Katie tweets out saying, also attorneys that file lawsuits in Washington must abide by the federal code of conduct and the Washington state professional conduct rules. Seeking to embarrass, delay or burden a third person is a violation, see rules here. And what she's referring to is Tati's lawyer basically like talking about her on Twitter, which she claims is against the conduct rules. I'm not sure I'm not a lawyer, but I'm sure if he's a lawyer, he kind of knows what he's doing. He's apparently a very good lawyer, so. I don't know if he'd be doing all of this to then get like in trouble. She goes, violations of these rules can lead to disbarment, suspension, sanctions, attorney discipline imposed by any federal or state court, bar association or governing authority. Like would he really be doing all of this to spite Katie and then lose his career over it when he's like such a big and good lawyer. I think Katie thinks she's really important and people are actually gonna sacrifice their life to like ruin her life. Grievances can be filed against the attorney and witnesses who participated will be interviewed by federal officials. This is serious. These tweets will not be deleted. These are public records and the rules of the court, thanks. So then uh, regarding that tweet about how this was not filed officially, Michael Saltz responds to that and says, the response letter was drafted by the firm Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher. It was a response letter during a legally required pre-litigation proceeding. Its contents are protected by the absolute litigation privilege. Reporting on it is protected as well. It is evidence in two cases. Someone replies to that saying, I'm so confused. Once you give it to a YouTuber who shares it in public, how can you dictate who and who cannot talk about it slash report on it? And then someone else says, Katie's purposefully misleading you. Big surprise, Michael Saltz. Are you seeing this? Katie's having a meltdown and telling lies again. And then he says, I have not had contact with Miss Paulson after the preservation notice other than to tell her not to contact me via stock or otherwise. I'm also blocked. All my comments have been for the purpose of collecting evidence or responding to other others publicly commenting on the case. I'm aware though postings by others that allegations of ethical violations have been made and threats to report me to the Washington bar. The threats I have seen are based on misreadings of the ethics rules. No communication was made substantially for the purpose of embedment. In other words, if the purpose of my posting was for a reason other than for causing embarrassment, there is no ethical violation. What is more, so long as the, the other side comments about a case, I have the right to respond. If they stop commenting, then I have no need to respond. Someone says, can you comment on why you only have given Emily Baker access to this response that has not been filed? And then he says, who said the letter was only given to Emily Baker? It's been given to lots of people, including me. I didn't write it. And then they respond saying, you just said who can and can't talk about it. It's protected once it's public knowledge. Who can dictate that? Emily said she was given exclusive access. So that means no other YouTuber at the time was given this access. He says, she asked. And then she says, and then Emily says, I didn't reach out to the parties involved in the suit and I won't because I am a commentary channel, not an investigator. I asked Michael Salt about the jurisdiction in federal court because he filed it. And then, without a crystal ball, tweets out saying, just because you're a former prosecutor, it doesn't give you the right to defame a party to a lawsuit without evidence. As an attorney, you should know that all parties have a right to share their side and it's irresponsible to pick a side before you have all the facts. Also using your platform to harm me and my business is a violation of YouTube guidelines and civil law says you can't defame competitors, so truly do better. But isn't that what you do to Tati and everyone else? You're a commentary channel, Katie. You're a commentary channel or a drama channel, whatever you want to be or don't want to be. You talk about other YouTubers. So if you're going to try and deplatform Emily, then you need to be deplatformed too. The moment you get Emily deplatformed, delete your f***ing channel. You talk about other YouTubers, you talk about other celebrities, you talk about reality TV stars, you say sometimes outrageous things about them. So if you think Emily is violating terms and conditions of YouTube by making videos about you, then you need to delete your channel and never make another YouTube video again. I am so angry, like so pissed off. You've never spoken to me, know nothing of my side and are spreading defamatory statements about me on your platform. No, she isn't. She's literally reading out a cease and desist or a, a filed lawsuit and basically just going over like the language behind the law. And then someone else responds to that and says, I've watched her video and in no way is she defaming you. She's going through the lawsuit and explaining it in a way people can understand. She did the same for the lawsuit against Tati. No, she did not. Didn't she tell you guys that Tati responded to the lawsuit? That's a lie. The documents you saw yesterday are not part of the lawsuit, nor a filing in court. Katie, calm down. This woman is just making content, just like the other commentary channels. She's not doing anything illegal. Focus on your stuff. People are going to talk regardless. Let it go. Freedom of speech. 
Isn't it how funny how freedom of speech comes back around? And then someone else says, wrong, this is all wrong, Katie. Why are you doing? This isn't helping you one little bit. You should stop. And then she responds, how many fake accounts do you have? And then she says, finally, every channel that is spreading defamatory statements about me, that I'm a stalker, have a troll army, or that I'm working with trolls with no evidence, please cease and desist. You are quick to accuse me of defamation while literally defaming me and make that make sense. So regarding this tweet, you know, about her being a former prosecutor and her defaming her, some respond saying, you could speak with Team YouTube to see what they think. And they at Team YouTube. And that is kind of how we as YouTubers get to talk to Team YouTube and have things resolved like monetization and things like that. So then Katie goes at Team YouTube at the Emily D Baker is using her platform to defame me along with the help of an attorney. I would like your help. Thanks. Katie, delete your channel delete your channel. I don't know how you think you're going to have any support from creators, any creators as, as a matter of fact, and you don't have any support from creators when you do like this, when you do stuff like that, don't expect us to be on your side. Don't expect us to be nice to you. We're all fed up of the things you do to other people. You play the victim all the time. And yet you do things like this, try to deplatform people for making the same type of content as you, except you don't like it when it's turned back on you. This is literally a lawyer breaking down legal language for people so that they can understand lawsuits going around right now. There is not a single bit of defamation in that. And it's pathetic that you would do this and expect anyone to be on your side with this Tati lawsuit when you're literally a small commentary channel deplatforming other commentary channels. I'm losing my mind, I really am. So Emily responds saying, at this point, you should have a clear grasp of what isn't is in defamation. There is nothing defamatory on my channel. There is commentary. And she goes, Emily, why did you allegedly mislead people yesterday and act like what you read to them was a filing from court? There was no court filing. There's been no response. Why are you hanging out with uh, accounts that have targeted docs and stalked me? Make that make sense. And then someone's response saying, she actually verbally stated it wasn't a filing. Yikes, stop embarrassing yourself. My goodness. Your behavior is getting increasingly more alarming. It really is. I know I poke fun at Katie. I know I say I don't like her and I don't like her as a person. I would never like be friends with her. Her. But her behavior is starting to get really alarming. Like it was embarrassing. It was kind of funny. And now it just seems like she doesn't really know what to do. And she's, you know, panicking. If you don't have a support network, I highly suggest you get one. This is really bad. You're not doing yourself any favors. And then Team YouTube obviously has to respond. This is basically an automated response. And then if they think the case has like merit, an actual person will look into it. But most of the time these are like automated responses or just a person going, hey, thanks, uh, we'll look into it. So it says, thanks for reaching out. As mentioned in our previous tweet, you can report it by flagging the content. We have our teams reviewing 24 seven and we assure you that we'll act as soon as we've checked that it violates our guidelines, but it doesn't, so they won't take it down. And then someone responds saying, it doesn't violate the terms of service. If you decide it does, then the other person's whole channel should be deleted that you know after she tweeted out that like at team youtube at the emily d baker is using her platform to defame me she actually quote tweeted it and said at team youtube please help me like they weren't responding quickly enough to deplatform another commentary channel so she decided to call them up once again this is pathetic i don't hate a lot of people i don't hate really many people at all um i wouldn't say i hate any youtubers that i've had like situations with even ones that have kind of annoyed me but katie is on the verge of like high dislike for me, just as a human being, not even as a creator, because sometimes there is like a difference between uh, what a creator does on the platform and how they are in person. I think this is actually Katie. This is what Katie is like. This is my belief. I think this is just Katie as a human being. I don't think she's playing a character. I don't think she's doing this just for the purpose of YouTube. I think she's genuinely just like this. Then someone says, I've been a follower of yours for a long time on YouTube. I've fallen off of social media and I just came back to see a bunch of nonsense. What is really going on? They claim you stalked Tati's family. You paid for her birth certificate. You're not allowed to delete anything. Why? And she goes, lies, lies, lies. When Emily responded to, to the other tweet saying, at this point, you should have a clear grasp of what is and isn't defamation. There is nothing defamatory on my channel. There is commentary. Katie goes, dear Emily, cease and desist. You should know the law. If you'd like my attorney, you can contact you. I do commentary too. See how that works. And then she goes, dear Emily, if you continue, you will hear from my lawyer. I find you a content harassing and you are harming my channel. See how this works. I never defamed anyone and you don't have the professionalism to even ask me for a response. Bias much? We don't have to ask for sides, like at all. If I just wanted to reach out to Tati, I could. If I wanted to reach out to no one, I could. If I wanted to reach out to Katie, I could. We as commentary channels don't have to reach out to people. And actually, frankly, problems arise when you do reach out to people because then a bias forms. When you're just looking at public records, you can form an opinion on what is publicly out there. The moment you start asking for comments and asking for stuff, you feel guilty talking about things, you know? And then someone actually said, I love internet lawyers more than anything in the world. All the laughs, thank you. And then she goes, what have I deleted? There were private videos, which I still have. Tati's attorney is under obligation to not break the code of professional conduct. And he's broken at least two of those codes in the past week. We will be filing a counterclaim against him for defamation. And then someone says, I feel bad for her because it can end in bankruptcy. If I was her, I would listen to Emily's advice since she has 15 years of experience. 
more than that because she's been a district attorney for 15 years but i'm assuming to get to that position you have to work a little bit longer than that so she definitely has more than 15 years of experience in the law field without crystal ball needs a new lawyer the one she has is not giving her proper advice and tati's lawyers are not playing and she goes emily knows nothing about my side i have a great attorney giving me great advice take care okay so there's most of those tweets so she did a video called we need to stop the speculation which was obviously clickbait for this whole situation hoping people would click on it the comments are turned off like this like it's disabled members only live chat so on and so forth but it's nothing about this then she has one called saturday night it's like a stream once again you know likes dislikes comment off members only live chat yada 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 and then she has the sunday night live stream which is basically just all about the emily stuff and commentary channels and drama channels and how she wants to counter sue but once again uh likes dislikes is disabled comments are turned off and it's a members only live chat she basically just says that what's happening to her on youtube is ridiculous that she's not trying to start drama with emily baker that emily baker's not blocked which isn't false but she did block her and if she expects emily to keep on checking if she's blocked or not just so she can like get in touch with katie you're not that special i remember i was blocked by katie and then i was unblocked because her tweet popped up on my timeline and then i was blocked again but like at no point do i go on her actual account to check if i'm blocked or not she goes onto this like little victim stuff that katie does where she goes really hard on youtubers like she went really hard on tati there is like a bunch of stuff that is really awful about tati and then she goes uh could you just be nice to me emily please i'm begging you please stop it's not fair to me as a creator but you do so much worse to other creators and she goes would you like to be in this situation but then like she's smarter than that we're all smarter than that which is why we're not in the situation it's only you isn't that speaking volumes how all of us have spoken about tati smaller creators bigger creators people smaller than you bigger than you and yet it's just you it's just you being sued and then she goes if you care about being a lawyer you'll stop because it's embarrassing a party of a lawsuit how is explaining the law behind a lawsuit embarrassing you is it because you're in the wrong i don't I don't know. Then she goes, you're speculating that I'm breaking the law. Isn't that what you did to Tati and her husband? She goes, I've lost 300 subs because of this. She's harming my case. There is no evidence for this. I have not been treated with dignity. There's been bullying. What about Tati and the way you treated her? Would you say that was treating someone with dignity? Accusing her husband of killing his own mother for money? Was that dignity and not bullying? And then she goes, why would a creator with 9 million subs to a small channel? Well, when that channel is saying things like your husband turned off his mother's oxygen so he could get money from her that's probably good re enough reason to sue someone regardless of size of channel and then she goes pewdiepie d'angelo trisha face banks they're all making videos on tati yeah we all are but none of us are saying that tati's husband turned off his mother's oxygen for some money my credibility has gone to crap which is because of you and not us she comes for tati's lawyer says she sent him a letter about ethics she says this whole lawsuit is smoke and mirrors it's a publicity stunt she says she has not deleted videos even though in the playlist about tati there are videos that say deleted and then there are videos that say privated she says she just privated videos but there are deleted videos on there so that's weird i have not been served my attorney has been trying to talk to them tati's lawyers are defaming me i don't want to defame or hurt anyone those are just some of the things that she said in that live stream. Um, she says that there are over 100 videos that are not very nice about Tati, yes, but none of them as bad as yours. And see, that speaks volumes. The fact that there are so many videos on the platform and yet only you got sued. Only you. And you're not the smallest creator that spoke about this. So it's not about size. It's about your ethics. She says that Tati's bullying the small guy. And like I said, why are not other drama channels getting sued? She says that there aren't millions of views on her videos, but like if you count them all together, then I'm sure there is more than a million views worth of videos about Tati on your channel. That's what the lawsuit is saying. She says, why is the blog post in the lawsuit? I took it down ages ago, but yeah, but it was still put up in the first place. Just because you took it down doesn't mean it never existed or never impacted Tati's business. Use your brain, please. And then she said, there are more than 800 of you in this live stream, please give this a thumbs up. And then she still turned off the like to dislike. So like, she says she's gonna counter sue for defamation and distress because of what was said to Dustin. So essentially she's trying to counter sue for defamation that she doesn't actually know of. So she's saying that because Tati told Dustin that she was going to pursue legal action against katie she's going to sue for defamation because of that even though she doesn't actually know what was said to dustin she just knows that tati said she was going to pursue legal action which isn't defamation she talks about that five million dollar conspiracy how tati's being sued for essentially five million which isn't explicitly said in the lawsuit and that's why she's suing katie for five million which also isn't explicitly said in the lawsuit it's kind of like a ballpark estimate of how much they want from her then she says stop going to drama channels to defame me it's like she doesn't actually know what is being said behind the scenes she says that she doesn't care enough about tati's business to damage it yet she spent hours 
looking into the business and called it a snake oil vitamin. She says she has lost money in the last week because of this. I don't know how you lose money because even if you upload a video and then delete it, you don't lose the money that you made on it. So how would you lose money on it? Unless you're talking about the lawyers, but that's on you. She says she's lost subs. She says that drama channels will become a party of, to the lawsuit because we're getting ourselves involved. She then says, am I the only person on YouTube with a brain? Then she says that drama channels need to take accountability, which is very ironic for her to say. She says we're bullying people. And I was like, isn't that what she does to Tati? Just wondering. She says that people need to give her the benefit of the doubt, that there is mob mentality, that people need to use their own thinking skills. She says, how is it that every time I go live, I lose subs? Well, I don't know, you tell me, Katie. She uses Trisha Paytas and Gabby Hanna as an excuse to not trust commentary channels. She's like, if I trusted commentary channels, I wouldn't enjoy Trisha Paytas' content. And I'm like, that was not the best example, Katie. Considering how problematic Trisha has been. She talks about the stalker clip, you know, when she's like, yeah, I've been paying for Tati's birth certificate, trying to look into her snake oil business. She's like, why would you even believe that? It's like, because you said it in a serious manner and you probably meant it. She says that clips about her are misconstrued, chopped up, but I was like, not everything needs context. In tweets, let's say you see things like, James basically his own mother for some money. That doesn't need context. That in itself does not need context. Someone told her that she's losing subs because of silencing. So she turned off the members only live feature and then she starts responding to people and then she goes off on the lawyer again, says that she'll report him for misconduct, that she'll get sued, disbarred, and then says that Emily is being used to attack her. She's asking people to cease and desist. She's, she's never done anything maliciously. I'd have to disagree. She goes, why doesn't Emily just talk to me? And it's because she blocked her and even if you unblocked her emily doesn't have to realize that you unblocked her because she's not going to check your account every five seconds she blocked me too i don't know if i'm still blocked or unblocked i don't really care then she addresses some kind of edwin guy who seems to be a creator because she says creator to creator and she addresses him because he starts commenting under the live stream and she goes don't be mean and then someone else says like hey he's not being mean to you at all and she gets called out for that and she goes well i'm not saying he was being mean but you're saying stop being mean i Anyway, that was her live stream on this whole situation. Those were the tweets. That's how this whole thing is going. And let me know what you think about all of this. Subscribe so you know when, you know, things are happening. And if there's any more updates, turn on post notifications to all and you'll know when all of that is happening. Social media links, uh, second channel, affiliate links, any of the links in the description. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.